Okay, we're going to begin lesson four now. We're talking about what's called transformations and congruence. All right. So let's uh, start with this term transformation. And a transformation is any change done to a figure. Now that figure might be a triangle, might be a square, might be a, you know something else, um, and we can change it. We can do all different kinds of things to change it. We can move it, we can flip it, we can spin it, we can stretch it. All right? So things like that are transformations. Now most of those that I just mentioned, when you move something or you reflect it or you spin it, it does not change the size. However, if you stretch it or you shrink it or something like that, it does change size. And that's not what we're talking about when we say congruence up here. So a transformation is any change done to a figure, but this idea of a rigid motion is a transformation where the original figure and the new figure are congruent. Okay, rigid has the idea of not moving. All right. So when we talk rigid motion, the motion we're doing doesn't move, doesn't change the angles or the side lengths. It doesn't stretch them. If something's rigid, you can't stretch it. If it's rigid, you can't bend it. Bending it would be like changing the angles. Okay, so we can't do any of that stuff. So rigid motion has this idea of the first thing that we started with and the new thing after we do the transformation, they're still congruent. So it's the same triangle, it's the congruent triangle, or, or the circle would be the same exact size if we moved it or something like that, All right? There are five different types of rigid motions that we're gonna talk about. So here they are, translation, reflection, rotation, those are the three main ones. Then we kind of get into this thing called a composition. And then this right here, a glide reflection is a specific type of composition. All right, so we're gonna talk about these three main ones first, and then we'll talk about these last two down here. So translation is, um, another word for that might be a slide, okay? So if I just took something and I slid it, all right? Basically, it's a movement left or right and up or down. Okay, now, we might just do one of those things. We might just go left and we might not go up or down at all. All right, we might just go right and then not go up or down at all. Or maybe we don't move left or right at all, we just move it up or we just move it down. When we say up or down and left and right, we're usually in this case talking about in, on a plane. Now. In lesson nine, lesson 4.9, which is the next lesson we're gonna look at. Remember, we're doing this out of order a little bit. We're gonna look at it on a graphing plane. Okay, so translation is just sliding something somewhere, all right? Now, a reflection is more the idea of a flip. Okay, so we're gonna take something, we're gonna flip it. And when we flip it, it is across a line. Okay, when we reflect something, we always reflect it across a line. So once again, we're gonna be doing this on a graphing plane later on. So we might have the line like y equals four or the x-axis or something like that, okay? Rotation, another word for rotation would be a spin. And we do this around a point. Now we can do it around any point. Once again, when we do it on the graphing plane in lesson nine, we're usually gonna do it around the origin. The origin is the point zero, zero. There are ways to reflect or rotate around across a line, reflect across a line or rotate around a point. And it's not on a graphing plane, but that requires us to use a compass usually. And that gets a little bit more difficult. We might look at that later on in the year if we have enough time. But for right now, we're gonna primarily deal with doing these on the graphing, the coordinate plane, all right? Now a composition, all right? If you think about like a music composition, it's where you take a couple and maybe different instruments and you you make some music and you put it together. It kind of has the same idea here, putting things together. A composition is two or more rigid transformations. 
I guess technically they wouldn't have to be rigid, but we're not gonna look at any that aren't rigid. So it's basically just two or more transformations. We're gonna focus on these rigid transformations. By the way, a translation, a reflection, and a rotation are all rigid. If you do them correctly, the new figure should look like the original figure. If you get done with a translation and the two shapes don't look congruent, you did it wrong. If you get done with a reflection and the two shapes don't look congruent, you did it wrong. If you get done with a rotation and the two shapes don't look congruent, you did it wrong. Okay, So all three of these right here are rigid transformations. And a composition is just doing two or more of those. So we might translate and then reflect. Or maybe we reflect and then rotate. All right, something along those lines. We're going to look at one of those later on. A glide reflection is a very specific type of composition. All right, we're going to deal more with this when we get into something called freeze patterns. Okay, We're going to do that later on in the chapter. But I'm going to explain to you what a glide reflection is. Um, and then I have an example of it to show you in here in just a second. So a glide reflection is a translation followed by a reflection. But it's not just any translation and it's not just any reflection. Okay, so I'm going to continue with this definition and there's going to be a word in here that you aren't familiar with yet and I'll explain that in a little bit. But it's a translation followed by a reflection. The reflection must be across a line that is parallel to the translation vector. That's that new word that you're not familiar with. All right. The reflection must be across a line that is parallel to the translation vector. The translation vector is just the movement or the direction of the translation. So if we slide something to the right, then the line that I reflect across also has to go right and left. If I slide something up or down, then the line I reflect across also has to go up or down. And that's what a glide reflection is. Okay, this whole idea of parallel here is important. Okay, So let's look at just a couple pictures of examples of these things. And then that's going to be it for lesson 4.3. Then the next video that you should watch in order is lesson 4.9. All right, so here's a, a couple examples. So let's start with this translation. There's a glide reflection up there. We'll get to that in a little bit. All right, so a translation, remember, is just a movement, left, right, up, down. So I take this shape, and in this case, I'm going to slide it down and to the right. And I get this shape, and these shapes are supposed to be congruent to each other. And right? if they're not congruent to each other, then I did not do my translation correctly. And I kind of freehanded these, so hopefully they look congruent to you. All right, but that's the idea of a translation. Okay, a reflection would look like this. So I have this shape here. This is my line. I reflect it across the line. Now, a couple important things for a reflection. If you pick any point on the reflection, say this point right here, and you go over here to this reflected point, and I connect that. I'm going to put a dotted segment there. If you could go with a segment, that's fine. But there's a couple important things. First, it must be perpendicular to the line. Okay, that segment connecting those reflected points, those reflected corners or vertices or whatever you want to call them, has to be perpendicular and this distance right here must be congruent to that distance right there. So I can't start one inch away here and end up two inches away over here. It's kind of like if you look at yourself in the mirror. If you're standing really close to the mirror, it looks like your reflection is really close to the mirror. If you're standing far away from the mirror, it looks like your reflection is far away from the mirror. Okay, so those two distances have to be equal and you have to have perpendicular. So basically the line of reflection is the perpendicular bisector of this segment right here. Now, let me go back real quick and talk about translation, important thing there. If I connect from this vertex down to this vertex, those are the corresponding vertices, that distance I could calculate it maybe using the Pythagorean theorem or the distance formula for in a graph, but that distance has to be the same exact as this distance. Also, the slopes have to be the same. Right? And then from this vertex to this vertex, same thing. If I connect those, that distance and that slope have to equal this distance and this slope. And they have to equal this distance and this slope. 
So the distances all have to be the same from corresponding vertex on the original to corresponding vertex on the new figure. All right, let's go to rotation. Okay, so we rotate it around a point. Now, where is that point? Well, that point's going to be you know, somewhere in this region or whatever. This would be a 90 degree rotation, all right? Um, we're gonna do this around the origin on a graph, but basically what happens, that point is probably right about somewhere in this region. But if I were to connect from this vertex, the original vertex down here, and then out to here, that would form my 90 degree angle, okay? Now, what if I did it from this point? Okay, so if I come from here, I'm gonna draw this one solid so you can kind of tell the difference, and I connect it down to here, okay? That would also have to form a right angle. And these distant, this distance would have to equal this distance, right? This dotted line distance would have to equal that dotted line distance. So that's how it works for the point. Uh, that's the, what's called the center of the rotation, all right? Keep in mind slope, if we do this on a graph, this slope would be the opposite reciprocal of this slope. Remember, for perpendicular lines, we have opposite reciprocals. Okay, let's look at a composition. So remember, a composition was two or more of these things combined. So this right here is a translation, and then I followed it up with a reflection. Okay, a translation followed by a reflection across that line. Once again, if you remember, if you connect this point to this point, that segment is going to be perpendicular to this line and the distance here above the line and the distance below the line are supposed to be equal. All right? now this is not a glide reflection. Remember the definition of a glide reflection is this idea of parallel. The, re the line of reflection all right, has to be parallel to the translation vector, the translation movement. So here's my line of reflection but here's my movement, and you can tell that this is not parallel to this. So this is not a glide reflection. A glide reflection is gonna look like this. So I take this shape and I move it, and then I reflect it over this line. So I move it over here, and then I flip it down here. So I take this right here, and I kind of flip it down this direction. Okay. Go in that way. All right. Now you'll notice that this movement, this is called the vector, is parallel to this line. That makes this a glide reflection. This is a composition. It's a specific type of composition. All right, so those are your things you need to know for lesson 4.3. That's it, not a real long lesson. And now make sure you watch lesson 4.9 next.